virgin most powerful radio sharing the gospel with clarity and charity i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier for christ i'm a soldier no they'll never take us under because we're bringing truth like thunder Raining on your speakers like a ton of bricks Hold the cross high cause we're Catholics Fight the good fight with the truth Stand tall with the truth I'm a warrior for Christ I'm in love with the truth Love God, save souls, slay error Go stronger The battle cry of the Crusaders Christus <laughs> Vinci. Christ conquers, Christus reina, Christ reigns, <laughs> Christus impera, Christ commands. Amen. Yep, that's pulling no punches, that's calling it out, that's acclaiming Christ as king, and that's exactly what he is. Welcome to the Terry and Jesse show, I am on duty. Terry. Jesse, I'm reporting on duty too, but I got some great news today about Catholics rallying to have 5,400 masses offered for President Trump, and we'll get into that as our good news story. We also want to talk about what uh, Biden played a key role in pushing the U.S. to take a hardline stance in crime in the 1990s. And guess what? Yeah, he's flip-flopping. He's apologizing in 2020. Also, talking about Black Lives Matter is a hate group. Well, let's look at that. Look at the facts. Again, that's what we're doing, just the facts. And then we're going to final up, finalize with the consecration to Russia now. We're going to talk more about why we need to consecrate Russia to the Blessed Virgin Mary. And I think that topic just needs to be really worked out. So we have a great show. Looking forward to it. And Jess, the best thing about our show is the soul food that we get every single day from the gospel. So let's preach it, Terry, brother. today I want to do the first reading from the Mass today because oh, I think yeah. it, uh, uh, there's, a lot of, there's a lot to that we can Good. apply to what's happening right now. Yep, let's do it. The first reading today at Holy Mass was the first letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 3, verses 1 to 9. And also tell why this is important, because we get a lot of phone calls and emails of people saying, my husband's unconverted, what do I do, no. what do I do? My kids are unconverted, what do I do, what do I do? Oh, this Today's reading answers the question, because I'm always, every time I get that email, I cut and paste First Corinthians 3, verses 1 to 9. I said, here's what St. Paul would tell you to do. Okay, so here it is. Mm -hmm. Brothers and sisters, I cannot talk to you as spiritual people, but as fleshly people, as infants in Christ. Now, this is sad. <laughs> this Because this is the state of the church right now in many places. Yep. The word, the word, the mystical body of Christ, St. Paul would probably say to most people, especially a lot of Catholics in, in politics, that they're fleshly people. They're infants in Christ. In other words, they're baptized, like Joe Biden, for example. But he appeals to the emotions, to the flesh, to what makes him feel good instead of being a mature person in Christ. That's exactly what St. Paul's talking about. He's saying, Corinthians, you guys should be mature, but you guys are like babies. And that's the state of a lot of lukewarm Catholics, low-information Catholics, they're baptized, they're part of the mystical body of Christ, but they have an infantile understanding, Terry, even of the basic stuff, like thou shall not kill. They're going, what's the matter with abortion? What's the matter with euthanasia? They have an infantile understanding, even of the basic things of the church. And that's what St. Paul's railing against. He says, I fed you milk, not solid food, because you were unable to take it. Indeed, you are still not able, even now, for you are still of the flesh. In other words, these are people that don't follow their intellect and will, the higher faculties. Yeah. They follow their passions, appetites, and emotions, the lower faculties. That's what St. Paul is saying here. Right. goes on to say, while there is jealousy and rivalry among you, are you not of the flesh and walking according to the manner of man? St. Paul is saying, you guys are baptized, but you're following your concupiscence, your fallen nature, your lower nature. You're not appealing to the higher faculties. You're not following your well-formed Christian conscience uh, that's been touched by the Holy Spirit. Then he goes on to say, whenever someone says, I belong to Paul and another, I belong to Apollos, are you not merely men? What is Apollos? By the way, he was a, he was a disciple. 
After all, and what is Paul? Ministers through whom you became believers, just as the Lord assigned each one. St. Paul says this, I planted, Apollos watered, he's another Mm -hmm. disciple, but God caused the growth. Ah, there's the answer to all the emails that I get. My husband's not converted. My kids are not converted. What do I do? I've had a conversion through Cursillo. And what do I do? Everybody in my family is against me. They're unconverted. There's the principle of the New Testament. This is what you do. First of all, you're, you're now called now to the ministry of Monica. Okay? Just straight out. Yep. You're now the St. Monica of your family. So what does the St. Monica of the family do? What St. Paul just said. He says... I planted, so St. Monica's with unconverted uh, husbands and kids. Plant. What does that mean? You share your faith in Christ. You share what Jesus has done for you. Mm. You share how important he is, the way you can't live one day without him. That's what it means, I plant. You plant the gospel seeds in your family. Second, Apollos watered. That means, St. Monica's, you pray That's called intercession. You do intercessory prayers, prayers of supplication, prayers of petition, and even prayers of penance for your family. And then what happens after? It says this. uh, Just as the Lord assigned each one, uh, but God caused the growth. If you're faithful to sharing your faith to little morsels of catechesis here and there. If you're faithful to an, being an intercessor like St. Monica through prayers and penance, what's going to happen? God is going to cause the growth in those people that you're praying for. Is that going to happen tomorrow or next week? It, takes, it took St. Monica 15 years to see Augustine come to Christ. Then it says, Therefore, neither the one who plants nor the one who waters is anything but only God who causes the growth. Remember, it's not the RCIA program, not the pastor of the parish, not the bishop, not the prayer group leader that causes the growth. It is God. But you have to plant the gospel and water the gospel with your prayer. Then it says, He who plants and he who waters are one, and each will receive wages proportioned to his labor. For we are God's co-workers, you are God's field, God's building, the word of the Lord. Thanks, thanks be, to, be God. to God. Wow. So, no, so notice, we, all of us, are co-workers in this vineyard of the Lord. And those of us that have had a conversion, are living in a state of grace and walking with God, are called to continue to scatter seed. That's what we do in this radio show. It's all seed, seed, seeds we're throwing all day. And then you pray for those people that you're, that, you're, that you're scattering the seeds in front of them. Pray for them. That's called intercession, supplication, and petitions. Terry? Yeah, see, now I know why Pope Paul VI said that Fatima is a reaffirmation of the gospel. Because remember our lady said prayer and penance? Remember she said souls are going to hell because there's no one there to pray and make sacrifices? It's a biblical principle. Mm-hmm. And so let's get in, the, let's get in this fight. In other words, so many people right now are going, oh, my church is closed. I can't even go and make a visit. I can't do this. I can't. Stop being on the negative side. You been, give, you're baptized Catholic. Man, you're, you're part of the solution. Your prayers are very powerful. So thanks for that commentary, Jesse. And the, Bishop Sheen's commentary fits right into the, to that scripture verse. So let's bring him in. Full Sheen ahead. Here's what Bishop Sheen says about sins, Jess. You'll love this. He says, everyone who is conscious of sin knows that he that his sin deserves punishment. Check this out. But if a sin or guilt is denied, like we deny sin today in our world, the need for punishment finds its outlet outlet vicariously in the love of violence visited upon others. Jesse! This is it, right? It's going on right now. Read it again. again Bishop it Sheen again. said, oh, yeah. He said, everyone who is conscious of sin knows that his sin deserves punishment. But if a sin or guilt is denied, like it is in our culture, the need for punishment finds its outlet vicariously in a love of violence visited upon others. What is happening in our culture right now? Violence on others. Sheen, you nailed it. Unbelievable. Yes, it sits, man. Think about what we're going to be talking about, and does that just fit right in? We, we have, we have, we have. Uh, Bishop Sheen used to say that people think we're all immaculately conceived; that we don't have, we can't sin. The problem, Jess, as you know it, in the spiritual life, is when you deny that you're a sinner, 
They, Satan just jo- takes right over and says, oh, yeah, that's right. Don't worry about it. You know, you just keep fornicating. Keep committing adultery. Keep doing your violence. It's okay. Uh, you know, those people tell you you're going to go to hell. Don't believe them. That's the devil talking. Unbelievable. Good stuff, Terry. You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show. Yeah, we got some pretty uh, hot topics. We're going to be talking about Joe Biden yep. and uh, his hardline stance on crime in the 1990s. And you'll you'll see the fruits of his position. Also, is Black Lives Matter a hate group? <laughs> you think? I think, uh, I think I... Uh, you'll have no doubt after you listen to that segment. Yeah. Also, with all this Marxism and socialism and yeah. communism upheaval in our country, yeah. Do you think it's time that uh, that uh, Russia would be consecrated? I hope now? so. Uh, there's a lot of prelates that said, "Yep, that's what we need right now. This is what stop all the nonsense that's happening right now is Russia to be consecrated specifically to Our Lady." So we'll talk about that as well, Terry. And also, we're going to talk about how Catholics are rallying to have five thousand four hundred masses offered for President Trump. When we come back, Jess, I want to mm-hmm. tell the people what you said to me off the air that you'll say on the air regarding the masses being offered because this is amazing folks you're listening to the terry and jesse show can you tell we're too blessed to be stressed yeah too anointed Mm -hmm. to be disappointed and if hope was money we'd be billionaires you know why because we know what we just read in the gospel what sheen said the solution here is prayer penance sharing the good news of Jesus Christ helping people fall in love with God right now the world acts like God doesn't exist why? Because they've lost the sense of sin. That's what Bishop Sheen has been saying for the last 50 years. It's true. Hey, when we come back, mm-hmm. Jess, let's inspire people about these masses that are being offered for President Trump. And what group? I've got an article here that tells you how you can participate in having masses offered for our president. I think that's a great idea. All right, we'll be right Most back. powerful prayer in the world. Absolutely. Praise God. We'll be right back with more to inspire you to fall yep. deeper in love with Jesus and his church. We got Ernesto from Long Beach. You know, I just wanted to comment, you know, and I just wanted to thank you guys. And I kind of wanted to encourage people that are listening, maybe that are not donating, you know, because honestly, I got to be honest. I used to think you guys were a little too over the top, you know, (laughs) you know, yeah, that's right. If God gave us a lot, you know, and I'm, I have the blessing of listening to all this. I just want to call all the people, you know, I've got five kids, you know, and I don't make a lot of money and I'm still donating to you guys. God bless you, brother. You're amazing. We gotta, we have to do this. We have to do the extra. And it's not even the extra. People see it like it's extra. Kneeling for communion, saying your rosary, saying the divine mercy chaplet. It is not extra. It's what the church tells us to do. Amen. You're a good man, brother. 30 years old, 29 years old, five kids, and I thank you guys. But everybody else, man, get on fire. Fight for the truth, man. I know what I'm telling you guys. There's I no love it. Out there. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And here's an easy way to support us by going to smile.amazon.com and type in Catholic Resource Center or Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And when you log in your Amazon account and you purchase products, a portion of it will go right back in supporting Virgin Most Powerful Radio. And it doesn't cost you a dime. I want to thank you ahead of time because that supports us year-round. May God bless you and your family. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888 526 
1-800-242-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. We are two nobodies that want to tell anybody that there's somebody <laughs> called Jesus who can save anybody. That's right, Jess. All right, Terry. Hey, Jess, you, let me just, before yeah. we go to the Biden thing, this to me mm-hmm. touched my soul. I'm getting, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm having masses offered because this inspired me to even think about Catholics rallying to have 5,400 masses offered for the president. He says the holy sacrifice of the masses, Jess just said, is the most powerful spiritual weapon we have against the forces of evil in the United States. The group that's doing it's called the CatholicWorld.net site. Uh, we'll list all these masses. They're being ma- offered all over the world, Jesse. And, you know, people can just go to CatholicWorld.net and say, hey, I'm getting masses offered up. So that that's what I mentioned to Jesse. What was your response, Jess, off the oh, air? Oh, Terry, as soon as I'm done with the shows today, I'm going to go to the parish and offer uh, a novena, a string of novenas for President Trump. I was inspired by this article yeah, from yeah. Uh, what is it, the Register. Yeah. I, I said, I said, what? I didn't, why didn't I think about that? That's the most powerful prayer in the world. Yeah. How come I haven't offered a string of masses for the... I, it's just like I'm, I'm just pounding my forehead like, yeah. man, done deal. Yep. Yep. That's how it works. Okay, Jess, that's in... And it's actually LifeSite News is where you can get this article, folks, if you want to read the whole article. Yeah, that's right. All right, Jess, let's go on Terry, to uh, so, Mr. Biden. Yeah, Biden's played an important role in pushing uh, the U.S. to take hardline stances in, in crime back in 1990, and now he's apologizing for it because... Under President Biden's crime bill, more blacks were thrown in jail than under any other administration Hmm. and under any other bill. And now, former President Joe Biden, on Monday, he's apologizing for his past stances on criminal justice because, again, his criminal justice package has put more blacks in prison than any other uh, crime bill that's ever passed through Congress. And, of course, you know, he's, he's looking at... Both. This, the, the presidential run. So he's he's licking his finger, Terry, and where, putting it on the wind. Yeah, where can I and, get more votes? Yeah, and this is why right now he's apologizing yep. for his past stances on criminal justice issues. And in fact, in a speech on Martin Luther King Jr. Day yeah. in Washington, uh, Biden acknowledged the detrimental impact of his approach to crime in the late 1980s and the early 1990s. This is in his own words. He says this, quote, you know, I've been in this fight for a long time. Yeah, and you haven't done nothing too. He says, it, it, goes not just, it goes not just to voting rights, it goes to criminal justice system. He says, I haven't always been right. I know we haven't always gotten things right, but I've always tried. So he said this at the National Action Network Martin Luther King Breakfast. Uh, what's he talking about? It was an infamous 1994 crime bill. It was called the the Violent Crime Control and Law Enforcement Act, and the bill is widely pointed to as one of the driving factors of mass incarceration in the U.S., as well as the disproportionate number of black people who have ended up behind bars for drug-related crimes as a result of Biden's crime bill. And uh, without specifically naming the 1994 bill on Monday, Joe Biden said that the discuss- the decisions that were made in that era He says, trapped an entire generation. And he goes, it was a big mistake when it was made. So he's admitting. Yeah. And what's he talking about? Well, the apparent reference to the sentencing disparities between crack cocaine and powder cocaine, Joe Biden said, we were told by the experts that crack, you never go back, that the two were somehow fundamentally different, and it's not, but it trapped an entire generation. Uh, And he said, these are the things that I would change uh, in the 1994 crime bill, but by and large, what it really did, it restored American cities. Despite his efforts and involvement in the criminal justice reform of the Obama administration, Biden's past statements on this bill and his overall record on criminal justice is going to haunt him, Terry, yeah. as he ends up running for the president presidential camp, uh, nominee in 2020. Well, Jesse, what's interesting is in 2016, you know, it's funny, we have recorders of all these interviews. Jess Romero... Ten years ago, they could have recorded what we said, and we have to stand by it. I mean, that's what we said. So in 2016, in an interview with CNBC, Biden said he was not at all ashamed of his role in supporting the bill we're referring to and said it restored American cities. In fact, he said, I drafted the bill, Biden said at the time. And by the way, we talk about this mostly in terms of Black Lives Matter, Black lives really do matter, but the problem is institutionalized racism 
in America. These are the things I want to change, he added in his 1994 bill. But by the large, what what it really did, it restored American cities. It, he's talking b- b- both sides out of his mouth, Jess. Terry, he's can't, he can't run away from his <laughs> record. The fact is... His crime bill yeah. put more blacks in prison than any other crime bill headed by any senator. Yeah. And so uh, people are starting to ask him questions on that. And he's going to have to answer. Yep. And it's going to be very difficult for him to just uh, hide in the basement. Mm-hmm. Terry, but not only not only his his record yeah. when it comes to the cr- to crime bill. What about his Catholic record? Oh, this yeah. is to me what what what's more concerning to me is that just the facts is that Joe Biden identifies himself as a Catholic, he does. Mary, but he breaks with church teaching on virtually all the, the life issues. For example, on abortion and on the redefinition of marriage, Biden's been publicly corrected by some U.S. bishops for contradicting Catholic moral teachings. And guess what? It doesn't phase him at all. No. Uh, in fact, uh, Biden is uh, is is probably, Terry, Right now, this administration or the Democrats have gone so far in the abortion issue that now they're talking about infanticide, yeah. legalizing infanticide. And this is something that, again, the catechism of the Catholic Church, and before that, it's very clear. This is murder, 2271. And also, uh, Joe Biden, another thing that he's horribly wrong on is also the partial birth abortion. Horribly wrong on that. And he's been supporting this ever since he's been a senator uh, you know, in the House. And another thing, Terry, that he's horribly wrong on is redefining marriage. The church teaches that this is objectively disordered. We're all called the chastity. Uh, the man has performed that we know of two homosexual marriages. At the, at the White, White House. House. At the White House. Yes. Kamala Harris has also performed a homosexual marriage. You can watch it on YouTube. Yep. But the fact of the matter is, he's uh, uh, he says that this is his greatest contribution to the United States is uh, the legalization of homosexual marriage. So, Terry, on the Catholic issues, he's off the mark big time. What I find interesting, and just the facts, Jesse, we've got um, a Catholic man running for the presidency, and we have a non-Catholic man uh, who wants to have a second term. And I look at the, the positions of each of the two, and it's just a reverse oil, a reverse order. Have you noticed, Jess, the Catholic... Uh, person, Mr. Mr. Uh, Biden, he has uh, he's got it all wrong on the life issues. And then we have this Protestant guy who you just wouldn't expect. Man, he actually I wouldn't expect him because he was a business. He's a businessman. He's not a politician. So he's actually uh, changed. He's kind of made the uh, approach of politics a lot different because he's not using methods that normal politicians use. He just comes out and says, yeah, now I'm pro-life. Yeah, he made a change. Let's be honest, Jesse. This man, President Trump, at one time was for abortion. But what did he say that changed his mind? It was a family member who actually had an unplanned pregnancy. And he said, that just touched me to realize we might not have had our little nephew. And that turned my whole world upside down. That's, to me, ironic that you have a Protestant man having more Catholic principles than a Catholic a man running for the same office for the presidency. And as a Catholic, I have to say to myself, I'm not going to be prejudiced. I'm not going to vote for a guy just because he says he's Catholic. I've got to vote for the facts, where he stands on the issues. And I think all of us listening should do the same. Terry, but not only does Joe Biden, who's you know, a self-described Catholic, mm-hmm. not only does he support abortion, you know, homosexual yeah. marriage, and other, yeah. other uh, evil, diametrically opposed issues to the Catholic Church's teaching, but also, Terry, he's got some shortcomings when it comes to the principle of subsidiarity. That's right. This, yep. That's His right. economic policies, Terry, are a disaster. What I mean by that? Big government. That's and not, yeah, that he's a big government guy. In 1991, Biden backed a bill yep. that would renew the most favored nation trade status for communist China. Oh. Did you catch that? And China, They're we know because of its many human rights <laughs> violations, yeah. it wasn't in 1990, at that time, it wasn't afforded the coveted trade status. But... Senator Biden spearheaded an effort to reverse the policy so that we can bring communist China back into trade. And uh, and in 2001, the U.S., as a result of Biden pushing, pushing and pushing, granted China 
its long-sought permanent trade status. And since then, what's happened? The United States has lost nearly 4 million jobs to China. Yep. But in addition to be claiming, you know, he claims to be a champion for the middle class. Again, Biden claims to be in the service of the black community. Again, I'm going to repeat it. In 1994, alongside Bill Clinton, he drafted the biggest crime bill in American history, which led to a wave of incarcerations of more blacks than in any other time in history. And again, to this day, this bill is still highly controversial amongst Democrats. And uh, and let's not forget uh, Bill de Blasio, the Democrat mayor of New York. That's right. He also called Biden's crime bill. <laughs> this is a he called Biden's crime bill a huge mistake. And what about Kamala Harris, the top contender uh, running for BP? She also agrees with de Blasio. Just the fact. She, she, once, she once said that <laughs> Biden's 1994 crime bill, yep. quote, contributed to mass incarcer- incarceration in our country. Yet, yeah, Terry, Biden has <laughs> proven to be a poor example of a Catholic, and his, and his presidency would be a disaster because he's a, again, no more no moral scruples, Terry. Yep. And he's a big government Democrat. Well, Jesse, you just gave the facts. Don't give me your personal opinion. You didn't, Jesse. You yeah. you nailed it with just facts. And again, why do we give these facts to our listeners? Because you have to make a decision in what, sixty days, Jesse? Yeah, almost yeah. just a little over sixty days when we're gonna vote who we want to be our next president. You have to make your decision based on facts, not fiction or fake news. Terry, one, let me just mention one thing sure, real quick. hit me. Joe Biden, just something uh, for Catholics, yeah. just a dog whistle. Yeah. Joe Biden and Theodore McCarrick are yeah. good friends. In case... Does that surprise bo- bo- anybody? Both of them, both of them, McCarrick and Biden, yeah. both of them are the ones that... The pol- they, they built the political support for communist China. Yeah. And they were working together since the early 1990s. And also, one more thing about jo- Catholic Joe Biden... <clears throat> Guess what, Terry? He has said nothing, absolutely nothing, about all the vandalism and the statues being destroyed in Catholic churches, the attacks on Catholic churches. Joe Biden has said nothing. Yeah, again, Jesse, but a Protestant man has been saying this has got to stop. It's just so I, I feel embarrassed because of him being Catholic, and then he starts toting himself as I live my Catholic faith. You know what, Jesse? I know I, God will judge him, but I have to ob- objectively look at what he does and base my decision on what he does, not what he says. And I think that's important for all of our listeners to look at the facts, not fiction. That's right. Um, God help us. God come to our assistance as Amen. Catholics. Uh, he, here's the way the picture that I paint to men. Think about prayer like a 21-gun salute at a funeral. You see the guys you know, pull up their rifles. Sure. Fire! 21 gun that's exactly what you're doing when you're praying. Yep. It's a 21-gun salute. You're firing prayers off into heaven. So remember, Catholics, grab your rosary, grab your devotions, get those 21-gun salutes every single day, and let's fight for the right thing, Terry. Help the Helpless, a Minnesota St. Paul nonprofit organization chaired by Father of Tear and volunteers, is humbly asking you for your kind support to help the poor and the handicapped children in India and Ecuador. Through financial support from the help of the helpless benefactors, the children are provided with clothing, food, education, shelter, and the teachings of the Catholic Church. The mission is to help children thrive and become self-sufficient young adults leading productive lives. We also provide aid to poor families in Ecuador with food baskets, medicines, medical assistance, and help with funeral needs for the deceased. The work in India is done by Father Antonio's organization, St. Mary's. In Ecuador, the work is being done by the Servant Sisters of the Home of Mother. You can call us at 877-762-8857. To learn more, please visit our website, www.helpthehelpless.org. God bless you. Join VMPR live on YouTube September 12, 2020 for our latest free conference, The Ultimate Challenge. 
This exclusive virtual event will feature a brand new talk from Jesse Romero, How Apologetics Brought Me Back to Faith, plus never-before-broadcast video presentations from Dr. Scott Hahn, Father Mitch Pacwa, and the late, great Father Benedict Groeschel. Go to vmpr.org to register now and get ready to face the ultimate challenge. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. When we talk about Black Lives Matter, I think there's uh, there's selective outrage. Why do I say this? A good friend of mine, Fred Martinez, a good Catholic writer, wrote an article, uh, and we're going to share it. It's called Black Lives Matter is a Hate Group. I like what he says at the end of the article. Let me just start off with what the end sure. says. He says, this is from Dr. Charles Jacobs towards the end of the article. He writes, today an estimated 529,000 to 869,000 black men, women, and children are still slaves in 2020. Mm-hmm. They're bought, sold, and traded by <clears throat> Arab and Muslim masters in five African countries. This statistic estimates those enslaved in Algeria, Libya, Mauritania, and Sudan. It excludes Nigeria, for which there are no tangible estimates. So here's my question. Do these black, uh, do, do these black slave lives, do they matter? Yeah. Uh, Terry, Th- that's Great staggering. question. Great There's question. There's 869,000 slaves yep. to Muslims right now in four countries. <laughs> Talk about a Western human rights violation, but, and you hear nothing well, let, let's about be, this from Black Lives Matter. Well, let's be honest, Jesse. Be honest, brutally honest, why they don't make that comment. Should I just tell the people? Well, I know I why. The, the article is going to put it out, but go ahead and give the... No, uh, the uh, bottom uh, line is this. We can't talk bad about Islam. It's not politically correct. That's right. But for Christianity, oh, we can go after them. You know why, Jesse? You can destroy churches and, and they go into d- mass and punch people in the face. Exactly, Jesse. Okay, I just kind of, I had to make that comment because it's so true. But continue because this is, a, it's a scandal again, but it, it's really consistent with people, well, that well, having a, a narrative. That's not that's not supporting the narrative, Jess. That's right. So the fact is, is that black slavery yeah. is rampant right now in That's 2020 right. mm-hmm. in Muslim-dominated African countries, but nobody's willing to talk about it. Nobody the in the UN or anybody yep. else. Mm-hmm. So the uh, article says uh, the Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. Karenism has reached a new level of insanity and maybe and maybe targeting non-black minorities, right. non-Muslims as well as whites. A Latino man was recently fired for cracking his knuckles, according to the Western Journal. Uh, it says the sound of a person cracking his knuckles is almost universally annoying, but for Emmanuel Cafferty, this habit cost him his job. Amazing. Cafferty worked for the San Diego Gas and Electric Company and was driving in his company a truck near a Black Lives Matter protest in Poway, California earlier this month, according to the television network KNSD. So he had his arm dangling from the truck window and was reportedly cracking his knuckles, unaware that a man who had been following following him snapped the picture and shared it on social media. <laughs> you never know. In a, yeah. In a since deleted tweet yeah. accusing Cafferty of making a white power gesture with his hand. And uh, the organization's website stresses caution in that interpretation. However, that gesture is entirely innocuous and harmless. And ironically, what most people don't know is that Cafferty is of Mexican descent and described his family as being multiracial. Mm -hmm. So throwing white power signs would be absurd 
if the matter unfolded as Cafferty himself said. Terry, the fact of the matter is, is that this uh, the Black Lives Matter movement, which is a Marxist communist organization, its media allies are promoting racism against Latinos, yep. all non-blacks, and even non-Muslim blacks, because there's a nexus, Terry. There's a connection between the Black Lives Matter and uh, and and uh, and and Islam. Why? Because we know that the black community split in two. I've known this for fifty years. You talk to all my black friends; they'll tell you. They'll say, just like Hispanics are divided amongst Catholics in our family and oh, yeah. Protestants. Oh yeah, but at least. The Catholics, at least the Hispanics, everybody believes in the in the one true God, Father, Son, and Spirit, and the Holy Bible. Though even Hispanics are divided amongst Catholics and Protestants. Within the black culture, Terry, they're divided within Islam and Christianity. Mm-hmm. And the article the article points that out. It says, according to the research of the Last Refuge, Black Lives Matter (BLM) is influenced by black supremacists. Louis Farrakhan and the Nation of Islam, who does not like Latinos. The internal racism within the People of Color co- Coalition was always the inherent problem for Barack Obama, Eric Holder, and Tom Perez from Team BLM because the Nation of Islam and the new Black Panther Party absolutely dislike Latinos. And I can tell you that because I know that just the facts from, yep. from words on the street from. Sure. Uh, from my contacts in California and Arizona. So, but Barack Obama was kind of sharp. He attempted to reach to the Latino community. So here's what he did. He, he changed his rhetoric. He changed the language to gain Latino support. Uh, and, and this was the reason the DNC set out guidance. They told him, use the phrase people of color instead of black during media coverage. Mm-hmm. So if you notice Barack Obama, he did that. In his attempt to, to reach out to la, the Latino community, uh, which was always through the illegal alien angle and the dreamers, uh, but Obama never delivered on his fake promise, promises. He always would use the term people of color, people of color, because he knew that lingo could help him out. Terry? Jesse, here's what I want to just say. Folks, let's say all lives matter, right? When you say that only unborn babies' lives matter, what about the longborn? What about elderly? What about everybody? It's the very, very statement that when you, when you limit lives to be uh, a valuable, only certain lives, it's a racist statement. Jesse, I just said I'm calling them racist mm-hmm. because mm-hmm. not uh, black lives matter. Of course they do. All lives matter. And as sister said last week, <laughs> she says, I, I want to give you eternal life. You know, that's the key for life. So when people are coming down and saying that only black lives matter and you can't, if you're not going to be with us, we'll, we'll, we'll hit you or we'll uh, call you names. See, that's a racist group just by the fact that they're limiting their statement to a certain type of group. We're Americans, first of all, here that's right. in this country. And so I don't want to make a distinction that says, like, I'll tell you, I, I'm, a, I'm for pro-life. So I say unborn babies. I'm const- Why do I say that? When you have another group of people dying of over a million a, a year in America being executed, then I want to talk to you about persecution. So that's why I say that Black Lives Matter is really just a racist group. If you look at their website, you just read what they're all about. So, I mean, end of discussion. It's not even a, um, it's not even a judgment. It's just the facts. Terry and... Uh the Bible says in John three sixteen, for God so loved the world. The world that, includes yeah. everybody, Jess. So, so that would that means that all according to God, all lives matter. Now, that's right. Those words, yeah. BLM, Black Lives Matter. That's a true statement. Yes. But what what we're talking about is the organization, black, not the words, because those words. It's like if somebody says White Lives Matter. Yes, of course. correct. Yep. Hispanic, Amen. Like, Duh. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Really. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So that that's a that's a like no brainer. Everybody knows that. It's the organization Black Lives Matter which is trying to destroy what we would call as Catholics. I know Protestants call it capitalism. Uh we as Catholics we generally call it a free market economy. Yeah. We call it yeah. that's, a, that's our term. The Protestant term is more is capitalism, but it means the same thing pretty much. Uh it, they're they're trying to destroy the patriarchal family. They're trying to uh, defund the police. They they want civilian, you know, patrols to to run cities and and to get rid of the police departments. 
this is anarchy, and this is exactly, Terry, yep. what the brown shirts did for Hitler. That's exactly And that's right. what got him to power yep. is this political violence, going after your political enemies, beating people up in the street, yep. uh, Molotov cocktails, burning down buildings, looting, yep. breaking windows, robbing. This, this anarchy and this chaos is what brought Hitler into power, Terry. And, Jesse, these same people were looting and breaking windows in Washington, D.C., and here's the irony of it. I read this, that those same people were staying at hotels that were three, $400 a night Oh yeah, to stay in Washington, D.C. Now, Jess, come on, dude. If you're not working and you're just going to be an activist, where the heck are you getting your funding? And I'm just going to be honest with you. I know where that funding's coming from. From what I've read, George Soros, he's, at, he's funding this work because he likes to see America change its whole political outright from being a, a democracy to becoming socialist and communist. I said it because you know what, Jess? It's the truth. Those guys got their money outside this country. They can't afford this. Terry, and I'll tell you what's very sad. Unless we cut the funding. Absolutely. And, and how we do it, uh, that's going to be up to the Department of Justice. Yeah. But unless we cut the funding, Terry, they're planning on overthrowing America. This is, and, and I'm not... I'm not minimizing the effects of Black Lives Matter and Antifa and the Democrat Party. They're planning on overthrowing America. Yeah. With this, That's a uh, fact. You know, they started, first of all, these Marxists started off with the sexual revolution, taking over Catholic universities. I mean, it's just been piecemeal, taking over the, 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 the government, taking over courts, taking over the churches through social justice, you know, malformed uh, uh, teachers. But the fact of the matter is, Terry, uh, this is, we're in the final stages here. And they are, and and they at this moment, they're being funded not not only by George Soros, also Terry, multi million million dollar athletes are funding them. Okay, yeah, yep. black multi million dollar athletes are funding Black Lives Matter as well. Okay, so I'm talking, unless we cut the funding, well, let me. This is going to continue. And Terry, you also got people funding Black Lives Matter Network Foundation, uh, Amazon, yep. Microsoft, yep. Nabisco, Gatorade. Deckers and other Horrible. large American firms. Terry, this is, th th they're doing this on purpose. They want to overthrow America. Yep. And, and Jesse, what I would just say with Major League Baseball, stop going to the games, stop watching the games, stop buying any, anything you can do to boycott them financially. You hit them in the pocketbook and you'll be surprised how they'll change because uh, they're, they're really. Um, the almighty dollar is what's going to get them. They're driven by money. Yeah, you got it, partner. It, hey, Jess, when we come back, consecrate Russia now. Why? And what are other prelates saying about it? And why is it so important to do that? You're listening to the Terry and Jesse show on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. If you want to tell your friends with on, on your YouTube channel, we almost had a 1,000 new YouTube people just in one week because of you, our listener. Tell us by liking us on YouTube. Tell your friends. We'll be right back with more on the Terry and Jesse show. In 1 Corinthians 13.13, 13, St. Paul says, So there abide faith, hope, and love, these three. According to St. Ignatius of Antioch, faith is the beginning and love is the end. And God is the two of them brought into unity. Then comes everything else that makes up a Christian. May God grant that we may attain all the virtues that make for authentic followers of His Son. Tummy. How does the baby eat? Can the baby hear me? How did the baby get in there? Wow, a pregnancy can sure generate a lot of questions, but what's important is that a baby is a baby inside and out of the womb, not just after birth, but nine months before. 
at conception. That's right, every baby is a miracle. Hello, my name is Marianne Kuharski. I'm the director of Pro-Life Across America. If you know someone who is pregnant or in need of alternatives or assistance or would like to support the work of Pro-Life Across America, please visit our website at prolifeacrossamerica.org or better yet, simply dial pound 250 on your cell phone and say the keyword pro-life. Pro-Life Across America is non-political and totally educational. A baby's heart is beating 18 days from conception. Pro-Life Across America, the Billboard people. This is Terry Barber. I want to thank you for your support here at Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Here's an easy way to do it. If you're going to sell or buy a house, call Real Estate for Life, 877-543-3871, because they're going to get you a Christ-centered agent to purchase your home or to sell your home. And at the close of escrow, a portion of his commission goes right back to Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Call 877-543-3871. Thank you so much for your support. Welcome back to the Terry and Jesse Show. To join the conversation, call 888-526-2151. Now, here's Terry and Jesse. Our Lady of Fatima, pray, pray for, for us. us. <laughs> Terry, uh, there's a, a friend of ours named Father Paul Kelch. Oh, I've wrote, had uh, the good guy. Wrote, wrote a good article. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's by, basically on the run. Well, yeah, because uh, of his orthodoxy. Let's just be honest. <laughs> he like a lot of my friends. And yeah. you know what? People see me getting up and down in the chair on YouTube. <laughs> Jess, you know how many other things I got going in between these commercials? Dr. Ed Maz is on the other leg. Hey, oh, I want to join in. I mean, Jess. Terry, I can imagine your, my phone goes off like crazy. I can imagine <laughs> your phone. I don't even. Yeah. Uh, no, you, no, yeah. Goes, but my point is this. We love what we do because we're, we're helping people find Jesus Christ well, and salvation, man. And not only that, I think, Terry, you and I, we, we, we sense that our, you know, our time is short. Oh, you, every, I know that. Every single day. <laughs> <laughs> that we wake up. I thank God that I yeah. woke up today. Yeah. But uh, there's no guarantee we'll be here tomorrow, and so we want to make the best. Of, we want to make the best of today and get people to fall in love with God, and uh, we want to save souls. That's our goal. Amen. Let's let's get into this article. Terry, with Cardinal Burke. Oh, go ahead, Jess. Yeah, Cardinal Raymond Burke. Yeah. Made a request to the to the Universal Church. Thanks be to God. And specifically to its prelates. Yes. To consecrate Russia to God. Again, the problems that we're seeing in this country is communism and socialism. Yes. And. Uh, a lot of people like Cardinal Burke and others think that this will this will fight against these forces that have been unleashed by Russia back in 1917. Evil, and so, evil forces. Yep. And so this was done by Cardinal Burke with some urgency, this request, citing the Blessed Mother's request to the visionaries at Fatima mm-hmm. to complete this simple act of devotion to the Almighty. So Cardinal Burke, his request, it, it triggered a, a visceral reaction in Father <laughs> Paul Kelchik. He says... Yeah. Our Blessed Mother made this request to the Church of 1917, not to the Church of 2020. But in a sense, writes Father Kelchek, at this point in time, 103 years after Fatima, it's way too late to consecrate Russia. Russia has spread her errors throughout the world. And call it what you will, their atheism, their communism, their socialism. And these errors have been embedded throughout the globe. As of this date, no group of prelates or church personnel saying a prayer of consecration for the nation of Russia to God will magically erase the century Russia has been given to spread her errors. And adherents of these errors either run countries already or have found at least, they've, they've at least found incubators in almost every country in the world, including the U.S., even here in the U.S., as Bernie Sanders' recent run for the presidency demonstrates that so many in America have already bought into the lies of Karl Marx, yep. perhaps not realizing that in the end, they give up all the freedoms that have made this country the greatest in the world. Father writes, namely, a lot of these socialists in our country believe in atheistic materialism, not in the providence of God. And Bernie himself identifies not as a member of the Democrat Party, with which he caucuses, but he identifies as a Democrat socialist, and so does AOC and a few others. That's right. Th- these are people who, ad- you know, this is one who advocates level the playing field through heavy taxation upon the wealthy and corporations. Terry, you want to continue? I do, I do, Jess. To halt the spread of Marxism now, 103 years after Fatima, something more global, more universal, yet more personal and individual needs to be done immediately. 
No grouping of a few prelates saying a prayers of the consecration of our Blessed Mother is going to contain this. I've got Dr. Ed Mazza on oh, the line. awesome. And I think a, he is going to jump right in here. Oh, he's an expert he's, on this stuff. Exactly. I won't, I won't continue on the article. Dr. Ed, welcome to the Terry and Jesse Show. It's such a pleasure to be with the Babe Ruth and the Lou Gehrig. Oh, you guys are so <laughs> funny. This is going a little over top, but that's a side <laughs> joke here. Dr. Ed, I wanted to finish this article, but I think you could tell us you the importance it, Dr. Of, Ed. of the You're all over this. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, this this poor priest, he's you know, he's a little bit misguided here. Okay. Okay. Uh, you have to you have to understand that this is a, it's like an exorcism. The mm-hmm. only way to exorcise the demon of communism and Marxism is for the Pope and the bishops to make mm. the consecration of Russia. Mm-hmm. Uh, this is what Our Lady asked for. It's what our, our divine right. Lord asked for. Um, and it reminds me of the biblical text where Naaman the Syrian who had leprosy, uh, was approached, I think it was by the prophet Elisha. Mm-hmm. Uh, you guys correct me if I'm wrong. Yeah. You're right. And Elisha said, God wants to cure you, and uh, all you have to do is, I think he said, bathe seven times in the Jordan. And uh, he looked at him, you crazy? You don't think we've got rivers up in Syria where, where, where I live? <laughs> <laughs> and the prophet said to him, basically, you know, look, buddy, if God had asked you to do something difficult, you would have jumped, right? Right. <laughs> but he asked you to do something very simple, and now you won't do it. That's the situation that we're in here. Uh, heaven has prescribed the solution. Uh, it's as simple as it sounds, that is the only thing that will turn this worldwide communist takeover into the triumph of Mary's Immaculate Heart. I, uh, Doctor, I, I, I agree makes with you. Sense. Simple. You're right. Doctor, I mean, Father Paul Kalchik, he's kind of saying in the article... Guys, it's a little too late. We should have done that before. That that's where he's going. Yeah. And I agree, I agree with you that the fact is Get it this done. is this is the the exorcism prayer that will drive out the demon of communism from the world and it has to be done just like an exorcist. He comes from a position of authority number 1 and number 2 his holiness his it, it, based on his office there's, there's holiness, so his prayers have merit. And then number three, he's very precise in his prayers against the diabolical. This is exactly a macro exorcism. The Pope has supreme authority, number one. Uh, the holier the Pope is on a personal level, his office is holy, but his personal holiness also helps. That makes his, his prayer meritorious. Mm-hmm. And then number three, the precision of his prayer asking Our Lady to consecrate Russia, that's what's going to exercise the demon of communism. I'm with you, Dr. Ed. I think Father Paul fell short here, I think, by saying that, ah, it's kind of too late to do this. Yep. I think he minimizes the power of this, of, of this ritual. Now, now obviously, it, it, it is late. The hour is late. Of course. And, and our Lord actually complained to Sister Lucia two years after Mary asked for the consecration. In 1929, she asked for the consecration. 1931, our Lord complained to her and said, My ministers, meaning the bishops, by delaying the execution of my command, they're, they're following the example of the king of France, and they're going to follow him into misfortune. Mm. And that was only two years after Our Lady asked for it. Yeah. And in, in a nutshell, what Our Lord was referring to is that Our Lord, when he appeared to St. Margaret Mary and revealed his sacred heart, he asked the King of France to consecrate France to the sacred heart of Jesus. That's right. And a, and a hundred years went by, yep. and neither him nor his son nor his grandson did the consecration. And what happened? The French Revolution, and the king lost his head, and, and, they, uh, and they lost, there was no more kings after that. And I, I, I'm sorry to say this, but we're approaching 100 years yeah. since Our Lady first asked for the consecration of Russia. And not when she came, she, she, she said, 1917, she asked for the consecration, but she said she's going to come back to ask for it. And it was June of 1929 when she came, in, when Sister Lucia was a nun in Spain, and she asked for the, she said, now is the moment when God asked for the consecration of Russia. We're approaching 2029, guys. So it's, yep. it's time to get our act together. And, and Ed, let me jump in to say that you're doing a special uh, three-part series for Virgin Most Powerful next month regarding That's the right. revolutions. Can you just tease everybody about what you're doing on that? Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm very excited to be doing that because Pope Pius XII said that uh, in 1517, Martin Luther uh, broke the chain that unites us to heaven. In other words, 
uh, there's the Catholic Church gets you to Jesus, Jesus gets you to the Father. And in 1517, uh, Martin Luther got rid of the Catholic Church. He said, mm. oh yeah, you, you can go directly to Jesus, and Jesus takes you directly to the Father. 200 years later, uh, in 1717, is when Freemasonry was founded, and they, and they rejected the Catholic Church, like Luther, but then they went another step, huh? and they rejected Jesus Christ. Right. Because the Freemasons, they, you can believe in whatever God you want to believe in, the higher power type thing. Right. Um, and then, the, in tw- uh, 1917, was the original Bolshevik Communist Revolution in Russia, and they went the full nine yards. They rejected the Catholic Church, they rejected Jesus, and they rejected God. And so, this is what Pius XII was trying to say. This is why we suffered World War II, and, and, and because the consecration of Russia hasn't been done, that's why people died from, from the communist uh, virus, from the China virus. Uh, that's why uh, Black Lives Matter and Antifa and all these Marxist anarchist groups are revolting all across the country. It's because the consecration of Russia wasn't done. Um, and also, I wanted to give a, a quick plug here, guys. <laughs> I'm going to be doing an online uh, course Good. Uh, starting September 15th. Good. People can take a church history course with me. They can take a world history course Excellent. with me online. Uh, they just go to edmundmaza.com. Uh, we're running a special right now. Mm-hmm. You can sign up for both courses for 450 okay. or just take an individual course for 300 And it's uh, Church History 101 from the Acts of uh, the Apostles to the Albigensians. Wow. So, mm. uh, this That's is quite the time a... to learn your faith Amen. be able to defend your faith. Amen. Dr. Ed, thanks for joining in on this conversation. You're a good man. We're glad to have you on well, our Dr. Team. Ed, th- there's a lot of people, a lot of uh, prelates, uh, very holy men yeah. that also uh, are of the them. position that you are yep. and that we are, that uh, we can't wait till, the consecra- till Russia specifically consecrate it to Our Lady. We know that the whole world has been consecrated several times. I get that. But we're talking about what Cardinal Burke is saying and many other prelates. The specific consecration of Russia, that's what we're waiting for. And you're right. This would be, this would be the silver bullet that the Catholic Church needs uh, to stop this, uh, this worldwide communism that, we, that we're seeing today. And Dr. Ed, for those who are listening to implement the Fatima message, I'm going to let you give a little bit for our listeners what we as individuals can be doing to implement the Fatima plan. Yes, you know, in order for the Pope and the bishops to get the graces necessary yeah. to be willing to make this consecration, yep. even though the, you know, the prayer would take one minute tops, uh, it, it, we, each of us, the baptized, need to be mm-hmm. making our daily offering, uh, offering up all our prayers, works, joys, and sufferings. We need to wear the brown scapular because yep. it's Fatima. Mary appeared in October as uh, Our Lady of Mount Carmel mm-hmm. holding the scapular. Um, we need to be praying the rosary every day. She repeated every time she met with the children, pray the rosary for peace every day. And I got to tell you guys, it's, it's the prayer of the rosary that's going to save us. When, yeah, well, you're not on our team if you're not praying the rosary. Dr. Ed Mazza, thanks <laughs> right. again. You can hear him on Mondays on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. Jesse, what state, and again, what state should we be living in, brother? Not on the state of confusion or the nope. state of depression or the state of despair or the state of uh, a drug addiction or the state of mortal sin. Let's live in the state of grace, get holy or die trying. And just like they say in baseball, when the, when the game ends and the coach comes up to you, when Jesus Christ comes up to you, are you going to be able to tell him, Lord, I left it all out in the field? Terry? <laughs> all right. Thanks again for joining us here at Virgin Most Powerful Rate. If you'd like to become a monthly donor, you get all kinds of good material sent to you by your in- commuter, computer. Just call 877-526-2151 or go online to virginmostpowerfulradio.org. Up next, Matt Arnold live here on Virgin Most Powerful Radio. May God richly bless you and your family. Full sheen ahead here at Virgin Most Powerful. St. Faustina's Prayer for Priests O my Jesus, I beg thee on behalf of the whole church, Grant it love and the light of thy spirit, and give power to the words of priests, so that hardened hearts might be brought to repentance and return to thee, O Lord. Lord, give us holy priests. Thou thyself maintain them in holiness. O divine and great high priest, may the power of thy mercy accompany them everywhere and protect them from the devil's traps and snares, which are continually being set for the souls of priests. 
May the power of thy mercy, O Lord, shatter and bring to naught all that might tarnish the sanctity of priests. For thou canst do all things. Amen. Virgin most powerful, pray for us.